all those other uh, schools happening and so this kind of got delayed but we are talking about primarily the seven valleys of Baha'u'llah and the spiritual journey and this is really not new to the Baha'i faith it's been part of all religions like Krishna uh, said they are, they are forever free from free who renounce all selfish desires break away from the eco ego cage of I me and mine to be united with the Lord this is the supreme state attained to this and pass from death to immortality S same thing Jesus uh, talked about very very truly very truly I tell you no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the spirit to be born again so in the Baha'i faith this is kind of talked about in the seven valleys and another book from Baha'u'llah the gems of divine mysteries which was written before the seven valleys it's the mystical journey spiritual journey in this world, you will have trouble <laughs> yes <laughs> I agree with that and you will see there's I mean huge obstacles and again in in John 16 Jesus said I have told you these things so that in me you may find may have peace in this world you will have trouble and basically overcoming the world is the theme in Christianity and being born um, but by the same token Jesus said ask you shall be given seek you shall find knock it shall open and so he doesn't say you know you have to be smart or you have to be knowledgeable but the condition in all religions is pure heart and Baha'u'llah in the uh, hidden words uh, said O son of bounty out of the waste of nothingness nothingness with the clay of my command I made thee to appear and have ordained for thy training every atom in existence and the essence of all created things that's very huge to me I don't know about you but he has created every atom and all existence for our training um, the clay of my command <coughs> So out of the waste of nothingness, with the clay of my command, I made thee to appear. So it's back to that book of Genesis, how God creates man from the clay and dust. And But now Baha'u'llah is rewarding the whole thing because our understanding has evolved because of the progressive revelation. I thought that was beautiful, the clay of my command. That's pretty much us. Have you seen when they burn the body and the ashes reduced to a little cup size? The whole human body can fit in a small teacup. And, uh, so Baha'u'llah again in the hidden words, he goes on by talking how thus are thou didst issue, air, thou didst issue from thy mother's womb I destined for thee two fountains of gleaming milk eyes to watch over thee and hearts to love thee so this process is incredible because it starts by uh, the conception of the egg and then God allocates a soul to that conceived egg he also has already before we are even before we before we even come to this world he's also assigned two fountains of milk the mother's milk two sources of milk and he's given us eyes to see and ears to hear and then hearts to love us these are all Baha'u'llah and Baha'u'llah goes on by saying I nurtured thee and guarded thee by the essence of my grace and favor and my purpose in all this his purpose is all this was that thou might attain my everlasting dominion and become worthy of my invisible bestowal it's like when we plant a tree 
We don't just don't plant a tree. We want it to grow and give fruits. And attainment to the kingdom of God, to the everlasting life, is the purpose of all this that God goes through. Just like parents go through a lot of trouble <laughs> raising children. <laughs> They're hoping for them to be fruitful and uh, have their own children and what have you. And, uh, and yet heedless thou didst remain, and when fully grown thou didst neglect all my bounties and occupy thyself with thine idle imaginings. He must turn away, Abdul Baha says, he must turn away from ideas which degrade the human soul. Not even actions. In the past it used to be action. If you commit this, thou shalt be stoned to death. The law under Moses. And what Jesus came and he said, even if you think about uh, something and you like such as even if you think about committing adultery you have already already broken all the laws mosaic laws so Abdul Baha reiterates this uh, this that you must turn away from ideas which degrade the human soul so when the idea comes that's the po point we have to stop all that um, so that day by day and hour by hour he may advance upward and higher to spiritual perception of the continuity of the human reality. So the human reality is not to develop big muscles and to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger and all that. The human reality is the essence within us, the soul. Um, the Bab in his writing says, Shouldst thou worship him because of fear, worship God because of fear, this would be unseemly in the sanctified court of his presence and could not be regarded as an act by thee dedicated to the oneness of his being. So the Bab, now he sets the bar even higher. He says, Don't worship God for the fear or the reward. And because he's above and sanctified, even uh, sanctified from being worshipped. So uh, Abdul Baha says, man has not been created for the life of this world, but for infinite bounties, for exaltation of mankind, to draw near to the divine threshold and be seated on the eternal throne of dominion. I'm sorry, this was my own translation from the original Abdul Baha. I couldn't find it in English. So Abdul Baha says, man has not been created for the life of this world, but for the infinite bounties for exaltation of mankind, to draw nigh to the divine threshold and be seated on the eternal throne of dominion. That's very profound. So a lot of people don't equate their creation with how high the purpose is. So this was seven images that I thought were the closest to the seven valleys of Baha'u'llah. The top on, on left, the top is search. And the second one is love. When you read the scriptures, you fall in love with God and the writings, the Word of God, I mean. Third, value of knowledge. Fourth, value of unity. F uh, fifth, value of contentment. And sixth, wonderment. And then the seventh is absolute nothingness. You just annihilate yourself. You lose yourself into God. And that's another seven stages of seven valleys from a caterpillar to a butterfly so you can fly higher and these are the way it's worded in the book search love knowledge unity contentment wonderment true poverty and absolute nothingness now this is not new from the Babi Baha'i River this has been said also in Islam the sixth Imam of Islam introduce these steps but in the Bab Baha'i revelation Baha'u'llah the Bab especially Baha'u'llah goes deeper into these valleys and explains them more 
So know thou, Baha'u'llah, in gems of divine mystery. This was revealed in Baghdad before Baha'u'llah proclaimed his mission. He was only known as Janab Baha. And uh, this is before the seven valleys. He says, Know thou of a truth that the seeker must, at the beginning of his quest for God, enter the garden of search. In this journey, it behooveth the wayfarer to detach himself from all save God and to close his eyes to all that is in the heavens and on earth. Very difficult. Because on earth you have your family, your children, your parents. It's very difficult to even detach yourself from what's all on earth. And heaven. Heaven is what the Bible says. It don't worship God for the fear or reward. So the valley of search, we are all searching, whether we are aware of it or not. The moment we are born, we are searching. That baby, have you seen them? As soon as they are born, they seek the milk. You know, they're instantly, their head is moving and they wiggle up till they find that source of milk. <laughs> they're searching because that search allows the baby to grow. And then little by little, they start crawling or trying to turn over and they hold their head up. All those limbs they didn't need in the womb, now they are starting to come in handy in this life. So by the same token, when we go through these spiritual deepening and the spiritual experiences and tests, which is an integral part of it, we are being prepared. Without pain, there is no gain. We will see that. We are being prepared for the next life. So, Baha'u'llah says, the valley of search, the steed, the horse that you ride on in this valley is patience. Without patience, the wayfarer on this journey will reach nowhere and attain no goal. That's right, there is a test. It is incumbent on these servants, he continues, that they cleanse the heart, which is the wellspring of divine treasures. Now what does that mean? So he's created us with a physical heart, and nobody knows why this thing beats on its own and keeps us alive. <laughs> the blood circulating, it's just an amazing thing by itself. But also, Baha'u'llah is talking about the, our spiritual life, uh, spiritual heart, is the wellspring of divine treasures. Wellspring is something that is poured out of. So God has already embedded these divine treasures in every single heart. But some choose to allow it to become the wellspring by recognizing it. And some, mm, they are ignorant of the fact that they have been created in the image of God. They are ignorant of the fact that this is the wellspring of divine treasures. I didn't know it till I actually read this. I didn't know we were, this is embedded in us already. And it's like unlit candles, they have to be lit. So, which is the wellspring, cleanse our heart, which is the wellspring of divine treasures from every marking and that they turn away from imitation, which is following the traces of their forefathers and sires and shut the door of friendliness and enmity upon all the people of the earth. Imitation. Baha'u'llah repeats this a lot, the kitab e the Seven Valleys, Gems of Divine Mist Imitation. Is that last line really saying that you're not supposed to be friendly with people? Um, it's no, it, not being friendly doesn't mean being enemy either. So it's basically saying and shut the door of friendliness and enmity upon all the people of the earth because Anytime love and hate can lead you astray, both of them. So that's what it means. It doesn't mean to be unfriendly or to be enemies. Both enmity and friendliness. Because you have to detach yourself from the imitation. You have to detach yourself from loving your parents. Not that you are not supposed to love your parents, but 
by detaching yourself because normally we follow our parents' footsteps in faith, religion, whatever their belief was, we inherit them or used to, most people. And um, so that's what Baha'u'llah means, to break from that feeling, emotions that lead us, may lead us into the wrong um, direction. And Abdu'l-Bal says, for love of God and spiritual attraction, do cleanse and purify the human heart and dress and adorn it with the spotless garment of holiness and once the heart is entirely attached to the Lord and bound over to the blessed perfection then will the grace of God be revealed <coughs> excuse me so again this concept of purifying the heart cleansing the heart that's how you become attached to God and that's and then the grace of God will be revealed. So the value of love now, you know, just love, you, those that pump iron, it burns and they build muscles. So you have to endure some pain to build your body up. I'm not a good example of that, I know that. The, but, uh, so in the valley of love, now the steed, the horse that you ride on, of this valley is pain. So this is why Abdul Ba says, without tests and difficulties, there is no spiritual growth. Um, so the steed of this valley is pain, and if there be no pain, this journey will never end. In this station, the lover has no thought, save the beloved, and seeks no refuge, save the friend, he, see, he seeth life in death, and in shame seeketh glory, seeketh glory. He must be full of spirit, give up thyself, that thou mayest find the peerless one, pass by this mortal life, that thou mayest seek a home in the nest of heaven. Wherefore must the veils of the satanic self be burned away at the fire of love that the spirit may be purified and cleansed and thus may know the station of the Lord of the worlds and if confirmed by the Creator the lover escapes from the claws of the eagle of love he will enter the valley of knowledge so search love now enters knowledge the valley of knowledge I've summarized this this is a substantial book I encourage you to study it on your own the whole thing the value of knowledge and come out of doubt into certitude the word knowledge that is used here has nothing to do with scientific knowledge with earthly knowledge human knowledge is in Arabic from the root word Erfan and that is the mystical knowledge, the spiritual knowledge, knowledge of God, the word of God that is. And come out of the come out of doubt into certitude. So before even Baha'u'llah writes the Kitab i Iran, the book of certitude, he's already laying the ground, the map to go through these valleys. And he's using the same word certitude as the word Iran. There is a difference between certitude and faith. Faith, you have it this week, next week you may not have it. Belief. You know, the scientists believed the sun was going around the earth up to 500 years ago. Even Prophet Muhammad said 1400 years ago, the sun is fixed, the earth goes around the sun. Even his closest, strongest believers, the next day they were telling the followers he had a fever that night. Yeah. So, <laughs> but, so uh, but 500 years ago the scientists proved what Prophet Muhammad had said 1400 years ago, that the earth goes around the sun. So these beliefs, knowledge, they are transient, they could be changed. But certitude is permanent and will not go away. That's why Apostle Paul endured five times 
39 lashes, five times. Those lashes, we are not talking about the little, every lash would leave a scar, a tear and a scar. Five times, his back must have been a mess. He endured three times being stoned with small pellets. They stoned them to teach him a lesson, but not to kill him. He was stoned one time or a couple of times with the idea of killing him and they left him for dead. He suffered a lot. And then at the end, of course, the Romans beheaded him, Apostle Paul. So um, that's when you have certitude, nothing can move you, nothing can deter you. And close to that same time, the Apostle uh, uh, Peter, Disciple Peter, uh, they crucified him upside down in Rome. So, um, and turn from the darkness of illusion to the guiding light of the fear of God, and with a pure heart apprehends the divine wisdom in the endless manifestation of God. He beholds justice in injustice and injustice grace. In ignorance, he finds many knowledge hidden, and in knowledge, a myriad wisdoms manifest. He breaks the cage of the body and the passions, and consorts with the people of the immortal realm. I don't even know what that is, but <laughs> it's above my pay grade. He breaks the cage of the body and passions, and consorts with the people of the immortal realm. He mounts on the ladder of inner truth and hastens to the heaven of inner significance. After passing through the valley of knowledge, which is, the valley of knowledge is the last plane of limitation. What's this plane of limitation? We go back, I'm sorry, we go back, the plane of limitation was the cage of the body and the passions. What our body, Abdul Baha says, is the, it's the body that is prone to sin. It's, you know, the byproduct of the body is sin. Abdul Baha says that. So this, once we have broken loose from this cage of the body and passions, that doesn't necessarily mean dying physically, although that, that, that could be a helpful thing uh, in this journey. But uh, spiritually breaking loose from all those passions, overcoming the body, overcoming the world, like Jesus said, so this is the last plane of limitation. The wayfarer comes to the valley of unity. And you won't stay in that valley long either, we will see. But we are now we are going through the valley of unity. So this was a diagram of, uh, again, this has Islamic roots, but in the Baha'i faith is expounded on deeper. Do you remember the seven stages of creation that we all come from God, from the will of God, determination, destiny, decree, permission, term, and book. And this is the, we've talked about this a lot, this side, but we haven't talked about that side yet. But the seven valleys is basically the reverse of the process of creation. The will, the determination, destiny, decree, and then it comes, it reaches man once it is decreed to us, and then from this point, the arc of ascent, this is what separates man from animals. We go through our spiritual journey, search, love, knowledge, unity, contentment, wonderment, and annihilation, which is annihilation in God. We lose ourselves and return to God. In the Quran, God says it is God who begins the process of creation, then repeats it. Then shall ye be brought back to him. This is a repetitive cycle. We have that in other traditions, in Hindu and um, all the other old traditions, in different ways they have been worded. But in Islam, it's in the Quran. So this is authoritative. There is no doubt about it. Baha'u'llah and the Bab say Quran is 100% error proof. 
again another place in the Quran about this cycle to him will you be re will your return be of all of you um, the promise of God is true and sure it is he who begins the process of creation and repeats it that he may reward with justice those who believe and work righteousness in Buddhism it talks about four noble truths life consists of suffering the root of suffering is attachment physically you know this worldly attachment the end of all suffering is attainable so there is light at the end of the tunnel there is a path to the end of all suffering and the path is the dharma the order of the universe and that eightfold path in Buddhist tradition is spoken of uh, right understanding, right thought, speech, action, livelihood, effort, mindfulness, and right concentration, focusing on the right thing. Similar to Zoroastrian also. So we went through these and uh, now value of the value of unity in this station he pierces the veils of plurality flees from the worlds of the flesh and ascends into the heaven of singleness with the ear of god he heareth he heareth with the eye of god he beholdeth the mysteries of divine creation so this piercing the veils of plurality means not you no longer see differences you see unity you so this all variation all the variations which the wayfarer in the stages of his journey beholds sees in the realms of being proceed from his own vision this is much larger than race or issue ethnicity gender all that it encompasses the whole existence <laughs> which those things are part of it those prejudices so these variations so when it's proceeding from God it is from one single unit source as they spread out and come to this contingent world they <coughs> that's when you see the pluralities but the ori origin of it is you, uh, a single unit. So th this plurality is as a result of the way we see things. It really doesn't exist. A pure heart, again, Baha'u'llah says, is as a mirror, cleanse it with the burnish of love and severance from all save God that the true sun may shine within it and the eternal morning dawn then will thou clearly see the meaning of neither does my earth nor my heaven contain me but the heart of my faithful servant contains containeth me that's from the Islam and then they enter the valley of contentment although to outward view the wafers in this valley may dwell upon the dust in this life yet inwardly they are thrown in the heights of mystic meaning the tongue fails in describing these three valleys but this mystery of inner meaning may be whispered only from heart to heart it cannot be verbalized this is only communicated from the heart of God into our heart and again in Buddhist tradition Nirvana in, you know is blown out or quenching extinction of the fires of or poisons of passion aversion ignorance once you overcome all those very similar it's the same God talking through all these different manifestations of God he mounts on the ladders we went through this uh, but uh, so the purpose again in the book of Revelation Jesus says to him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne 
even as I also overcame on the cross when he passed all the tests and I'm set down with my father in his throne because he overcame these tests. This throne is symbolic, of course, as you know. The valley of wonderment, it is tossed in the ocean of grandeur and at every moment this wonder groweth. Now he seeth the shape of wealth as poverty itself and the essence of freedom as sheer impotence. Now is he struck dumb with the beauty of the all-glorious. At every moment he beholds a wondrous world, a new creation, and goes from astonishment to astonishment and is lost in awe at the works of the Lord of Oneness. If we ponder each created thing we shall witness a myriad perfect wisdoms and learn a myriad new and wondrous truths. One of the created phenomena is the dream. This is the only phenomena Baha'u'llah talks about in the seven valleys. Why? Because it's very significant. <coughs> we still don't understand it, nobody understands it, but Baha'u'llah says, that's noble, our son, when he was <laughs> an infant. <laughs> Bother, <Bo. laughs> um, Behold how many secrets are deposited therein, how many wisdoms treasured up, how many words concealed. Just in the phenomena of uh, dream. So I always wondered what he was dreaming about, because his lips kept moving. I think he was drinking milk or something. So Baha'u'llah talks about this dream, how you see something in your dream and 10 years later it comes true. Happens a lot, right? All of us have this deja vu's and those moments, but nobody understands why. <coughs> so Baha'u'llah says now there are many wisdoms to ponder in the dream. Not just it's a phenomenon, but there are many wisdoms in the dream which none but the people of this valley, valley of wonderment, can comprehend in their true elements. First, what is this world? So now it's going to this philosophical deep question. First, what is this world where without eye, because your eyes are shut, and ear, and hand, and tongue, a man puts all of these to use? Because in your dream you see yourself walk or run, or slip, in my case a lot, I slip a lot and fall from some height, I'm like, <laughs> but uh, those are when <laughs> probably you eat too much. <laughs> but uh, second, uh, how is it that in the outer world, thou seest today the effect of a dream when thou didst vision it in the world of sleep some 10 years past? Consider the difference between these two worlds, the mysteries which they conceal, that thou mayest attain to divine confirmations and heavenly discoveries, and enter the regions of holiness. God has placed these signs in men to the end that philosophers may not deny the mysteries of life beyond the life uh, of the life beyond, nor belittle that which has been promised them. So this is the purpose why this phenomena, we have been empowered to have this phenomena, is a created phenomena. Originally, Baha'u'llah, rather than using the word philosophers, he uses the word the veiled ones, muhtajibin in Arabic. Shoghi Afandi didn't have a very high regard to philosophers that spoke but didn't act. They, he, and Abdul Baha too, what starts with word and ends with word is useless. What starts with word should end with action. So Shoghi Afandi, rather than saying the veiled ones, he translated it into philosophers. So nobody can deny the mysteries of the life beyond because of these dreams, this phenomena of dream. For some hold to reason and deny whatever the reason comprehends not. You know, it's natural, a lot of people see if I don't understand it, I'm not gonna believe in it. And yet, weak minds can never grasp the matters which we have related. 
reflect upon the perfection of man's creation. The creation of man means not that man has created something, but the perfection of man's creation, this perfect creation God has um, done man. And that all these planes and states are folded up and hidden within him. He uses the word, uh, the word avalim in Arabic, which means all these worlds and realms, planes and states are folded up and hidden within him. What does that mean? Does that mean our perception of the universe is a creation of our mind? God forbid, no, that doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that. We know God created all, all, be, all things for the purpose of our tra training. Th then we must labor to destroy the animal condition till the meaning of humanity shall come to light. Humanity, uh, the original uh, Persian in Sony means the human condition. The human state, not the humanity that we think about worldwide, no. It's the human condition. So till the meaning of the human condition shall come to light. The heart is the dwelling of eternal mysteries. Make it not the home of fleeting fancies. Waste not the treasure of thy precious life in employment with the swiftly passing world. Thou comest from the world of holiness, bind not thine heart to the earth. So this is very profound. Now, please, sh you know, if you understand this, share it with me because I don't quite understand this myself either. I mean, I don't, you know, um, it says, uh, Baha'u'llah says, reflect upon the perfection of man's creation and that all these planes and states are folded up and hidden away within him, within us, all these worlds. Do you know what I see here, Islam? Yes, what do you see? Like we're, God has given us pure potential. Mm -hmm. And the planes and the states, I mean, we have potential. And it is in us, but then we have to get rid of the animal condition and so forth. So that's how I see it. Excellent. It's my, I think you posted this about um, racism. Yeah. Two children playing each other. It's, it's the knowledge of racism and all is not from a young age, but it's built as learned. you grow. As you, yeah, it's learned as you grow. So um, those are the animal conditions that, you know, is spoken of and we have to see past beyond that and get into our potential little feeling. Excellent. Yes, Leah. It's like a, you know, a person, a human's uh, development. When a person is younger, maybe everything he or she understands is like a, it's very superficial level. Sure. Everything has to be more concrete than abstract. Correct. But when your ability, mental ability, or spiritual potential develops, it becomes like a, sometimes in life, uh, 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 along with the life experience, we start to uh, have those uh, sometimes light bulb realization. All of a sudden, uh, all of a sudden, understand something. It's like a new world was falling or hidden before. Now it's like we got a glimpse at, the, at that moment or oh, open up for understanding of better, you know, some kind of understanding. Yes. So. It's in this one aspect. Probably. And uh, did you want to say something? Uh, <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. I think also when you were saying like this to the animal condition probably when we are more uh home to the uh, animal instinct, we are more it's like a the, um, the, the, the level of potential to understand something spiritually is low. Uh -huh. Only when we, little by little, start to 
in crisis. It's, it's, uh, it's a progress developing, getting less and less animalistic, more and more uh, human-like or spiritual. And then our uh, progress, we start to realize more things we didn't understand before. Yes. It's like more doors open or windows open for our spiritual understanding. It's like coming from the bottom of the well. You start from the bottom of the well, you come up, you see a small portion of the sky. As you come up, you see a larger and larger view of the sky. And once you come out, then you see the whole panorama of existence, creation. That's, that's how, you know, how I see it too. But what's interesting, in the beginning, do you remember Baha'u'llah said he has created, God has created all creation for our training. See how much God loves us, that all this creation has been brought into being by his word, be, and it is, for our training. So when we see the vastness of the space, which has nothing to do with our spiritual growth, we realize there is a vastness of spirit or uh, the vastness in the spiritual realm because it mirrors the physical realm everything all the, these phenomena so when we see that the vastness of our love the, the vastness of God's love for us the, the way the plant grows the seed you plant it becomes a small shoot and then turns into a tree and it f gives fruit and all that and Jesus said you know if a tree doesn't produce fruit you know the branches said abide in me so you can give fruits if you don't abide in me then this branch will wither and fall off and then people will come pick it up and burn it so this is why we have to give fruits yes uh, creation or religion is that the animal condition is like a, a person full of hatred is not going to understand the power of love or a person with aggression is not going to manifest the like it, compassion because the animal side is dominant over the spiritual side imperfect uh, condition of a human being away from that perfect you know the God, God created man with all the potential and love everything. So that's the perfect perfection of man's creation. When God created man with all this potentiality, he landed already. But when man comes himself or uh, manifest the animal condition, it's an imperfect condition. So we are created with this body which is prone to sin, Abdul Ba says. And because of the needs, the physical needs, but also we have been given the spiritual teachings to control those. So they are both good. The physical body is good for us because now we have a thing that we are constantly fighting with or trying to create a balance not eat too much you know gluttony and not commit adultery and things like that that the body is asking or wanting to the animal side because the animals don't follow all those they're just following their instinct so that's also that creation is good too the body because now it's become a tool that is causing us pain for growth spiritual growth so it's all good but because of that constant struggle, that constant jihad, in, it internally, we are, yes? I think, uh, uh, I think I was very touched upon the transformation you talked about, uh, suppressing the human qualities and going to kill the human, uh, uh, kill the animal qualities and transform into uh, a spiritual form. Uh, the Guardian has also talked about uh, conquering yourself. When he went, uh, first when he, uh, he was uh, a part of the Guardian, he went to the Swiss Alps, conquered himself, mm -hmm. and then he came back. Like, I think the biggest struggle all of us have is conquering ourselves. Excellent. Suppressing the 
uh, animal instincts and what it is and bringing out the spiritual form. Perfect. I think that will be our lifelong struggle. And I think in one of the slides you have mentioned that very clearly. That's, thank you for sharing that. That's very, per right on the money as they say. It's perfect. So, the heart is the dwelling of the eternal mysteries. And then you enter the valley of true poverty and absolute nothingness. This is the last valley of the seven valleys. Then you have the other four valleys. This station is the dying from self and living, living in God. He who has attained this station is sanctified from all that pertains to the world, as we talked about. Apostle Paul in Romans 6 says, We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead, through the glory of the Father, we too may live in a new, in a new life. So he gives resurrection its true definition, the spiritual resurrection. For if we have been united, he continues Apostle Paul, for if we have been united with him in a death like this, his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self some translation, our old man, but this one is, I think, NIV. Our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Amen and amen. <laughs> That's what it means. That's why the beauty of this life is there is an end to it. This physical life, there is an end to it. You become free from this cage. Uh, because we all have shortcomings. Wherefore, this is from Baha'u'llah in that last seventh valley. One uh, annihilation. Wherefore, if those who have come to the sea of his presence are found to possess none of the limited things of this perishable world, whether it be outer wealth or personal opinions, it matters not. <laughs> so, nothing matters anymore in this seventh valley, the valley of uh, annihilation, self annihilation wealth, opinion. For whatever the creatures have, have is limited by their own limits and whatever the true one has is sanctified therefrom. This utterance must be deeply pondered that its purport may be clear. So everything we understand is limited to us, is surrounded by our own limitations. So we cannot Surround the surround God because He's created us, and whatever we imagine becomes our own idols. In this city, even the veils of light are split asunder and vanish away. His beauty has no veiling save light, his face no covering save revelation. How strange that while the beloved is visible as the sun, Baha'u'llah was there, yet the heedless still hunt after tinsel and base metal, gold, silver, diamonds. Ye yea, the intensity of his revelation has covered him and the fullness of his shining, his, his shining forth has hidden him. It's so bright, the weak eyes can't see him. It's just covered him. So he's there, whether somebody recognizes him or doesn't, it's not God's fault, it is our own limitations. In this valley, the wayfarer leaveth behind him the stages of the oneness of being and manifestation and reaches a oneness that is sanctified above these two stations. Ecstasy alone can encompass this theme, not utterance nor argument. In all these journeys, the traveler must stray not the breath of a hair from the law. 
for this is indeed the secret of the path and the fruit of the tree of truth and Jesus said the same thing when he said I am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the Father except through me if you love me keep my commands and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate or comforter in some translations so that Baha'u'llah says in all these journeys the traveler must strain not a breath of hair from the law just because you are going through these valleys doesn't exempt you from not following the law for this is indeed the secret of the path the straight path and the fruit of the tree of truth and Jesus said the same thing I am the way the truth and the life John 14 16 if you love me keep my commands see Jesus says to follow the commands Baha'u'llah in the first paragraph of the Kitab Ardas says uh, follow my commands for the love of my beauty Jesus said Whoso, whoever has my commands and keeps them in the one who loves me is the one who loves me and one who loves me will be loved by my father and I too will love them and show myself to them means his return anyone who loves me will obey my teaching my father will love them and we will come to them father and Christ Jesus we both of them will come to them and make our home with them wow that's that's why he said I have to go to the father to make to prepare this he has many mansions you know he has many mansions in his home and I have to go prepare them for you and I'll come back and get you and Baha'u'llah said in that seventh valley and all these stages he must cling to the robe of obedience to the commandments and hold fast to the cord of shunning all forbidden things that he may be nourished from the cup of the law and informed of the mysteries of truth again the word commandments law truth all together Krishna said whenever there is a falling away from the true law when the potency of the, a religion is gone an up an upsurge of unlawfulness then I emit myself I manifest myself Krishna said I come into being age after age repetitive progressive revelation to protect the virtues and destroy evildoers to establish a firm basis for the true law the law is in all revelations we are not exempt Baha'u'llah again in Seventh Valley these journeys have no visible ending in the world of time this world but the severed wafer if invisible confirmation descend upon him and the guardian of the cause assist him may cross these seven stages in seven steps nay rather in seven breaths nay rather in a single breath <laughs> they who soar in the heaven of singleness and reach the sea of the absolute reckon this city which is the station of life in God and as the furthermost state of mystic knowers and the farthest homeland of the lovers this station is first the first gate of the heart citadel now the seventh valley which is so impossible incomprehensible for us now this is the first entrance to the city of the heart and the heart is endowed with four stages which would be recounted should a kindred soul be found and after that then he writes the four valleys so we can't get into it today god willing maybe next week we start to, to be covered the four valleys yes can you please go to the previous slide yeah. Questions, comments? I'm glad it goes from seven steps down to one single breath. <laughs> <laughs> By grace of God. <laughs> yes.